Hello doll filiacs, it's Ray again, and today we have a special custom doll for you guys in celebration of Pokemon's 25th anniversary and a character from Pokemon Sword and Shield, the newest installment. We have a custom doll of Nessa, the water gym leader. So we took a Monster High Claudine doll. I feel like she's really going to match this character and skin tone really well. I do also like her face mold for this particular character, so I'm really happy with the choice. And she's also fully articulated, which is great for any Pokemon trainer or gym leader because you're a pretty active person with a pretty active lifestyle. So we're going to start by removing the head. We need to boil some water and then just stick our head right in there to loosen up the vinyl. Oh, my camera skills are terrible. Well, that's awkward. But we use the hot water to loosen up the vinyl so that we can wriggle around and pop her head right off. There we go. And that way we can kind of begin this process. So I'm gonna start by chopping off all of this hair. We got these dolls from an eBay purchase a while back. Um, we do have that as a doll haul video but a lot of them came with like really sticky material in their hair or their hair was just really matted and knotted up so they're probably all going to lose their hair anyway but i start by chopping off all of the hair and then i'm going to take my pliers in through the neck hole and just kind of scrape around the scalp to like pull those little plugs into the head and get rid of all of that excess hair this part is always so gross because you're just constantly pulling out like this goopy, somewhat wet hair blob. That's real gross, but it has to be done. Then I remove these earrings and unfortunately the ears do have to come off for this project. Nessa does not have cat ears, so we're going to just saw these off. And I know in the video I look like I'm sawing like a madman, but I promise I'm going much slower and being more careful than it looks. If you are going to be doing customizing and you're using sharp objects, please be super duper careful. And there we go. Both ears removed, nice and easy. Then I just take a tissue with some acetone on it to wipe off the factory paint. And for some reason, I had a lot of trouble getting into like the nooks and crannies to get all of the factory paint off. So I did end up using a Q-tip with some acetone as well to get like the corners of the eye and the mouth. But you know, being a little OCD, I decided the entire face needed to be gone over with the Q-tip anyway. So I did the face and the scalp with the Q-tip as well, kind of overkill on that, but that's okay. And now that that's done, I can bust out the epoxy sculpt, which is my first time using this. So we're taking one part of each to make sure they're equal parts, and we're mixing them together. And we get this kind of gray white blob thing that we can use. I'm going to split that in two and then flatten them like pancakes and then I'm gonna stuff them over those holes in the head. And that way we're getting rid of that as an issue in the future. So we're just covering those holes up. And I kind of figured I'm not rerouting the head or anything, so I may as well just give her a full epoxy sculpt, like skull cap. So I did that. I used water to help smooth things out and like get the edges really nice, but just covered the entire head, waited a few hours for it to cure, and this is what we had. Pretty simple. Now, what we're gonna go ahead and do is paint the scalp to match the hair. And she has this black and aqua colored hair, but the majority of it is black. So I'm painting the entire scalp in black just so that it matches the hair a little better. Now that that's done, we can start with the face up. And I started her face up by taking soft pastels and a brush. Um, I used a lot of slightly darker than her skin tone browns to begin like the contour of her face. So getting like a contour on her nose, a little bit on her um, hairline area, 
her cheekbones so that we can get a little bit more definition in there. And then I moved on to some orangey reds for the cheeks and a very light pink for the lip. I also did a multitude of blues for her eye makeup. Not so bad. Using my kneaded eraser to kind of clean up edges here and there. But we're off to a pretty good start. Oh, I totally forgot that I probably should have used white first to make a really good base layer to build that color, especially on the darker skin tone. You really want to make sure that you use a white first um, and then spray it with the Mr. Super Clear between layers. And that way you can put the color on top of the white and it'll show up more vibrant. My bad. But now I'm going back with a light brown to draw in the eye shape. I also went in with the white to draw in the uh, eyebrows as well and to kind of color the eye before we start adding the actual eye colors. So again, using the white to help lighten the skin tone so that when we lay down the color later, it shows up more vibrantly. And it makes a huge difference on these dolls. I love it. Because here you can see I'm adding color pencil for the eyeshadow for the character and this beautiful blue color and these are all um, watercolor pencils that we bought individually um, we didn't have enough money to buy like a full eight trillion pack so we just bought a couple of colors individually to use for these dolls but you can definitely see how putting the white down between layers so many layers really helps to make that color more vibrant. And now I'm going in with a dark brown to do the eyebrows and I'm trying to do like the little flicks to make it look like hair. And then I did black on the outer edges to kind of darken those outer edges. Alongside doing the pastels for the face up, I wanted to do some body blushing because a lot of her skin is going to be showing. I want it to look more natural than the doll body itself. So I just went in with some browns. Um, I think maybe a, a deep red color to kind of give it more of that sun-kissed look. And I just did a, like one or two layers of the body blushing. I didn't want to go too crazy. But yeah. From there, I went back to the face and started drawing in the details. So doing like the eyeliner, um, the details of the iris. I'm just using a really sharp black watercolor pencil. I gave her a nice wing on her eyes and I love it. It looks beautiful. I even went back with like a dark blue to add a little more to the edges of the winged liner so it does gradiate from the black to the dark blue and I love how it looks with her eye makeup. using the dark blue to kind of finish out the edge on that wing. Then we're going in here with all of the colors, uh, including a little bit of purple to kind of add dimension and depth to the eyes. I even go back with the light blue and later with the white to kind of brighten the iris. So there's a little more differentiation between the iris and the pupil itself. going in with the white to brighten things up a little and then drawing the thick chunky lashes for her with that black pencil 
thank God for giant anime lashes because it makes this so much easier rather than gluing on lashes or having to make a thousand little ones with a really sharp pencil. Then I'm going in with my white acrylic paint and a super tiny brush to kind of make the whites of the sclera brighter and that way it helps the eyes to stand out more. So just going over both corners of the eyes and then using the same brush to paint in the catch lights to give it that sparkling effect. And I also went back with a little bit of silver. You can't really tell, but it looks beautiful in person. It's kind of a humid day out. Looks like it's gonna rain. So I'm a little nervous with how the Mr. Super Clear is going to properly coat the face up, but we're just gonna stick her outside the window, give her a quick spray. Ooh, okay, wait, that was like half the can. Yikes. And now we're off to the hair. Nessa has this beautiful black and aqua hair, and I really didn't want to mess it up, especially since this is my first time using nylon hair. We got the black nylon hair from Amazon, and we actually got the aqua from Pro Dolls on Etsy and I'm really happy about the purchase. So I kind of have a plan for the hair. I'm gonna lay down some glue and then put the strips on and that didn't work at all. So we're gonna step up the glue game to the E6000 because it's never led me astray so far. So I'm just putting on some glue and then slapping on one of those sections that I cut off and letting that dry. Oh yeah, E6000 is working way better. So I'm just gluing on all that hair. I'm starting to add the blue because she does have two streaks of blue that come back into one blue section on the back of her head. And that's actually what I'm preparing now. So I'm putting the nylon sections down facing one way so that when I get ready to style the hair, I can pull them back and there will be like a really nice hair seam. So I'm just gluing those strips, making sure that I have everything sectioned off. And now it's time for the outfit while the hair dries. And these are the pattern pieces that I used to make the shorts and the top, but it did take a million different tries before I got them. And I also took the time to epoxy sculpt some pieces for the shoes, her various armbands that she wears, and her hair pieces, as well as that like bun hair piece that she has at the back. And I didn't do a video of me painting the outfit or the accessories, but I wanted to go ahead and include me painting one of the dive balls that I'm going to include in her shoe design because I'm so proud that I did this. Look at how tiny this thing is. And I made two of them. It's so small. Uh, I'm really proud of myself. So I took these colors. I have white, black, and then two different blues. I have also hot glued this epoxy sculpted ball onto the end of a washable marker and that is how I'm gonna paint it. Cause I figured it would be way too difficult to hold it with my fingers to paint rather than to just like stick it on something else that I could hold and be able to maneuver it around. So I'm taking the black and I have done the line and the little circle for the Pokeball um, where like the button goes. And now I'm doing the wave texture in that darker blue and in the lighter blue. And I wanted to do the black first just to give myself like a guideline to work with. So using the black as that guideline, painting around it with the different blues to make the wave sort of texture that's on the dive ball, the little splash at the top of it, and then carefully getting the two blue sections together. Come on, focus. 
so blurry. There we go. And then the last touch is putting that little white button on the Pokeball. And we're done. I, I was so proud when I made the first one, so I had to record me making the second one. I think it looks just like a dive ball. I'm really happy with how it turned out. And here are both of them together. Let's see if we can get a better, better shot there. There we go. That's better. And now we have all of the pieces. We have the face with the hair, everything all sectioned. So all we have to do is style it with the hair breaths and everything. We have the body blushed body. I even painted her toenails and I painted on her glove as well as painting her fingernails that are visible. Her hair barrettes, her bun piece, her armbands, her Dynamax band for Dynamaxing her Pokemon, and her outfit, which turned out stunning. I mean, look, it went from this to this, just with some acrylic paint, and I love how it's turned out. I painted all of the details by hand. I'm so happy. The magic of paint took some crusty looking white pieces and turned it into magic. And here is the finished product. This is our very first custom doll from head to toe, and we couldn't be more proud of how she turned out. I will say this, there were a couple of issues along the way. I am not the best seamstress, but I will stress over a seam. And the hair was a little bit tricky, but overall, I think we did a great job. I mean, come on. She looks beautiful. I will say that her hair gave us some major issues. It was our first time working with nylon. I honestly think that yarn wefts would have been easier to control and maintain, but I wanted to give nylon a shot. Maybe we'll do some more nylon in the future. I don't know, but it, it got the job done for now. And then her face up looks stunning. I love how her face up turned out. Overall, I'm just really excited that we finally finished this doll and how beautiful she turned out. I mean, look at this outfit and all of those accessories. It seems like a simple outfit, but it took forever to paint everything and to get all the little details right. So really proud about it. The body blushing looks really good on her. It actually looks like she's been spending a lot of time outside in the sun, you know, training with her water type Pokemon and these shoes. I love these shoes. I took a lot of creative liberties with the shoes. They are not actually wedges in the video game, but I gave her some wedges and I made them real extra with those little wave details on the sides and the dive balls that I put on the back. So I, I do really love the shoes that we were able to create for her. Her outfit looks really good on her. What do you think? We love Nessa. She looks so beautiful. We love her face up. We love how the hair turned out, even though it gave us some problems along the way. She looks like she is ready to battle. She is ready to get in there and take some trainers down a peg. And it's great because she's one of the few people of color in the franchise. So I know she's here to kick butt and take names with her Goldeen, Aerokuda, and Dreadnaw. Hey. I just love her so much. I'm really proud of how she turned out. Again, I think if we had done yarn wefts, the hair would have been more manageable and it would have turned out a little bit better. But overall, I am so happy with how she's turned out. The outfit I was real worried about for a long time because I just sat there looking at those white pieces of fabric and just thinking they were horrendous. But after painting them, it looks so much better. I love the shoe design that we came up with. Just head to toe, extremely proud of this doll and how she turned out and all the work that we put into it. I now fully understand what the other doll customizers go through in just a small fraction because this isn't the most extravagant hair or the most extravagant outfit or anything like that, but it was tough. It was really hard to do all of this. So I'm really happy that we finally got it finished. I'm really happy with how beautiful she looks and just so excited to keep customizing. 
So if you somehow magically made it to the end of this video, I just want to say thank you so much. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you next time. Bye!